Hey guys and girls and welcome to episode 17 of the FPL Pop-In Pod. Uh, we're recording this straight after the games are finished and the window is still a couple of minutes from closing, yeah. but I think most of the main stuff's already Deadline been done. day drama is almost over. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sort of peaked a bit earlier, had a little bit of a frivol towards the end with Mares, and then I think it's sort of petered out a little bit now. Yeah. Obviously there's been a lot of action on the pitch as well. Yep. But before we talked about that, I have to introduce ourselves. I'm of course McDavious. And I'm joined, as always, by her ladyship, Nymphria. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll start off with our usual review of the game week, at least the main event, which was tonight at Wembley Stadium, Spurs versus Manchester United. And it certainly started with a bang. Yes, definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, a goal in as quick as time as a British athlete would be happy with a 100 metre sprint. Yeah, 10.48 seconds or something silly like that. Yeah, really, really fast. Um, a little bit controversial though, you know, whether Kane was already in the Man United half. So. Oh, if he was cheating. Yeah, he was. Oh. <laughs> Shush, just because you don't have him. <laughs> I don't have Ericsson anymore, which no. hurt a little bit. He got Mig Freedom. He did, took it to the full extent. He did, he really did. But... Well, not quite to the full extent. He didn't score a hat trick, but yeah, well, yeah. he did have probably one of the best game weeks he's had in a while. In a long, yeah, since he was sick last time I saw. Man United didn't really help in the prediction sense. Mm. Uh, I predicted three all, yeah, which was a little bit off. Mm-hmm. You predicted a Man United win either three two or three one. Yeah, well, you know, I did think that Spurs would score goals. Yeah, I was kind of hoping Parry would score one of those goals <laughs> um but just can't get over yeah that no I, honestly when i seen the way that man united set up their team this evening i thought oh this is this is gonna be a tough match for spurs and poor it looked red hot it looked scary to be honest any team facing that lineup you would be a bit quaky in your boots so fair play to spurs because they brought it they took their chance against united and I did not foresee 2 0, so fair play to them. No. Or. A... Well, I got the two goals, I suppose. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. For you, Spurs. you put it to the Spurs side, just over generous with Man United again. Yeah. Um, Always too over generous in my goal giving. But what we did do well mm-hmm. was the supporting act. Yeah. The South Coast derby. Yeah. Because we both predicted a one all draw. Yes, we did. Only we don't know who's truly won that one. Because I said it would be a spicy one all draw. Mm-hmm. And you said it would just be sort of a run the mill boring one all draw. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. until we get to see a replay of that, we don't know. I mean, I didn't really hear much watching the TV. Wow. There wasn't They're not really, really much... going to report spiciness, are they? Well, if there was a fight or two, I mean, I said there was going to be blood. Did you? Yeah. Oh, it was yeah, like, a, it was like an did. episode of Game of Thrones or something. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I won that one then. Probably. <laughs> I mean, it was Brighton and Southampton, so. <laughs> But um, I ended up having a lot of stake in that game, Ooh. which I didn't foresee before the game, but we'll, we'll get on to that. Yeah. But what I did see was my surprise fixture, Ooh. which was a Chelsea loss. Yes, you finally got I, your, your, I got your a surprise uh, giant right. killers there, didn't you? If you pick them every week, <laughs> one of them is going to happen at some point. I just, in typical Poppin' Pod style... We just weren't generous enough with the goals. Mm. We were very conservative. Yeah. I said 1-0 Bournemouth. And they went and smashed him 3-0. Yeah. <laughs> which is great for Aspera Quetta in my team. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Tebow, for coming back, <laughs> you know, when you were sick. <laughs> they obviously need um, Big Willy back in goal. Oh, dear. So I was, you know, pretty much bang on with my prediction. And yeah, you did get one over on me there because I went for Liverpool Huddersfield as my surprise fixture mm-hmm. and I said 2-1 mm. and it wasn't that. <laughs> no, it was close. You had the right amount of goals. Yeah, but I didn't give them all to Liverpool like I no. probably should have done. I, d- I did think Huddersfield might get a goal past Liverpool and to be fair, they did knock on the door a few times. Yeah. They did they did look like they might nick one a couple of times. Especially when Kwana came on. I think to some extent the score line didn't necessarily reflect the match because I do think that Huddersfield, you know, they they did defend 
I know that sounds stupid in a 3 nil game, but they did defend quite well. Mm. It's just that Liverpool was just that much better to kind of take their chances when they actually got them. She's got a killer instinct at the moment, especially Salah when he wants a goal. Yeah. No one's taking the ball off him. No. Even boring Milner. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Poor fella. I did love Klopp's press conference after that and he was like, oh, I like it when my players have a conversation about, you know, who should take the penalty. I think he was going to like, but uh, I'm glad Mo took it. Yay. (laughs) 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 You know. Um, Boom. (laughs) Yes, Mo Mo. (laughs) Yeah, so they were our predictions. A little bit of a mixed bag. Well, pretty good other than the heavyweight. And that's mainly all because of Man United letting us down. So we'll get to the points that we got. Because we're doing this so soon to the end of the game. So we yeah. obviously haven't had our overall ranks updated and tables and stuff. Okay, my bonus points have just dropped. And breaking news, mine has just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> After that long pause. Yeah, um, that was a bit of deadline day drama for you. <laughs> just waiting for the app to reload. Come on, come on, come on, tell me my bonus points. Um, mine, I have to do a little bit of sums, but I think I'm going to end up around the mid-60s, I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm currently on 41, but I have to have my vice-captain points going in. And I've got some coming off the bench. Cool. So I think I'll probably be around mid-65, something like that. Yeah. Which, which ain't too bad, because I've had a couple of lean weeks, so... Yeah, I don't think you'll, was quite... you'll be too far behind me. Apparently, according to this, with bonus points, I'm on 68, so I'm pretty chuffed with that. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. I was getting a bit worried there when, you know, Aguero, captain, was taking a bit of time to do anything, and I was thinking, oh dear, you know... <laughs> But. And Jones doing you well. Yeah. Um, Cheers. <laughs> well, talking about our players, mm-hmm. it, shall we get on to a sort of a loose player review? Yeah, yeah. Sort of, because we're we're doing this on the fly. Well, not literally on the fly. Fun. I don't think you would appreciate that. <laughs> At least on my end. Um, yes, yeah, so we're doing this we're sort of winging it a little bit because yeah. we're professional like that. Yeah. Um, with the, with the pod on the side. So, yeah, the yeah. pod on the side. Right? You know, sometimes it has to be a bit a spontaneous. Hmm? Sometimes it has to be a bit spontaneous. Yeah. Keep it exciting. That's not what your script says. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew what a script was. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll start off um, because one of my players sort of takes up three categories, really, because of this whole transfer day Mara's debacle. Right. Um, he was still my captain because I did change it to someone by then click save, that Ooh. usual story. Um, yeah, that so old I was li- <laughs> Yeah, so I was a little bit worried. But Kevin was my vice captain. Mm-hmm. So thankfully, he's taken the points and he's lovely 11, well, 14 now with his bonus points. So they're getting doubled. So he's obviously my star man. Um, he's my fire player as well because next week they're away at Burnley, I believe. Mm-hmm. So hopefully he can do it again. And simply because of the Mara situation, accidentally having him as captain and then him not playing and Bruyne getting all the points he did, he's also my lightning pick. Okay. So that's a whole condensed one person triple header. He gets a hat trick of categories. I think you should get more points for that. Have you got anyone that takes up more than one category? <laughs> Mm. Or did more players, more of your players do well? Yeah. First up, we have my star player for the week. Yes. And that is, by far, little Theo Walcott. Didn't he play for, like, some big team? No. 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 So, um, oh, oh, Southampton. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That one. Um, I um denied this game week about what to do for Arnie and out of it, that is, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> rather than Schwarzenegger yeah um, I did not know who to make my transfer I dabbled with all Brighton but was a bit worried <laughs> that he might not get the Kiss attacking form <laughs> <laughs> um, I considered the Stoke boys and a lot of people went kind of Shakiri and Alan route but I was a bit worried based on form with them and then I really 
almost very nearly put it on Mila Voyevich, only to consider that I already have Rubens Lofter's cheek in my team and he's injured. I am working on a Sanchez plan, or at least I found a way to get Sanchez in my team after the last podcast and before this game week. So I kind of might be reevaluating that now after seeing the game tonight. I'm not saying I'm not getting Sanchez, but I'm just considering my options. However, what getting Walcott meant for Arnie rather than anyone else, it meant that that spot stayed around that same price, which was mainly why I went with Walcott, so that it became a kind of placeholder. Mm. Um, because it meant that I could then push Rubens up to somebody like Sanchez if I was to drop Aguero. Given the fact that Aguero might not get the game time now with Jesus coming back and so on and so forth. Lots and lots of things to consider, but that was a working plan and that is why I got Walcott. I did not think that he would get me two goals. (laughs) (laughs) And three bonus points for a total of 15 points, all in all. So, thank you, Theo. (laughs) (laughs) I'm very grateful. I did say in the last podcast that he, you know, may well be now an FPR asset if he's allowed the game time at Everton. And Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he has repaid me with that. So, he's my star man. As for my fire player, I'm considering maybe kind of a bit like you, probably looking at Sterling. Although it's Burnley in their defence, you know, can be pretty good. Thinking maybe him or Aguero, but I think I'll take a punt on Sterling for the fire pick. And my lightning pick is going to be Wilson. Oh, yeah. Wilson. Um, he's definitely one of those players that is like a lightning bolt every now and again. And when he's on it, He's like on it, like a car bonnet, really. So he got me a goal and an assist tonight and three bonus points for a grand total of 12 points, all in all. So he's a pretty good lightning pick. I've seen worse. But I would just like to make a little mention before we go on to the Daft Puffs. And this is because you say, have you got any players you can lump into more than one category? I would like to say that Finally, my person who's been in the Duff Puff bin for weeks and weeks and weeks could actually take the role of lightning pick this game week because Cabaselli got himself a clean sheet, finally did something after nine game weeks of doing <laughs> nothing. But I didn't have him in my starting 11, so I couldn't really what call him my lightning decision. pick. I know. Nine game weeks. Why didn't you put him in? Why didn't I put him in? Should play him every week. Oh, yeah, I tried that. (laughs) Look what happened. (laughs) You had Jones in over Cabaselli. Oh, Schoolboy stuff. Schoolboy. Talking of Duff Puffs. (laughs) Hey, Jones Gurner segue. Oh, don't. I was like a minus two. Now, to be fair, Mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks, Mm -hmm. you've complained about a defender getting minus one. (laughs) And one of your defenders. This week, none of your defenders (laughs) got minus one. (laughs) It's very true. You can't complain. Hallelujah, they got worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They're developing. Oh, crikey. <laughs> I, do you know what? It was like a leave of senses playing him in a way because I just... I knew Spurs would score goals and yet I still played him. It's like, oh, it's premium defender. Play him. But that I think that works when you when they've got an attacking threat maybe. But if they don't have any attacking threat, and I'm not being funny, Jones isn't necessarily the first person you think of for an attacking threat. Oh, I don't know. He put that goal away pretty convincingly. <laughs> That's that true. Was, that it was a really was finish. quite a good finish. Kane would have been happy with that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what I was thinking. I, yeah, I just shouldn't have put him in. And I just can't believe how many times. I will have to go back, I think, at some point and have a look at my team and see how many times I've had a defender that gets a minus <laughs> point for me this season. Because it's got to be quite a lot now. <laughs> and if I add up all the minus points as well, it's probably quite a lot as well. You could be in the top. Could be. Okay. I could be like top 100 right now. Could be. It's all Jones' fault. Very unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That'd be a lot of minuses. Um, my Duff Puff is probably, I could say Mares, but then his absence actually helped me. So I'll probably say Aspilicueta mm. with his one point against Bournemouth. Yeah, to be fair, Coutoir was kind of close mm. to that Duff Puff for me as well. So I did also feel a bit bad. I made three changes this week. Two of them paid off, De Bruyne and Firmino in. Mm-hmm. So they kind of worked out. But then I got rid of Zanka. I had Stevens in. I had him in. Yeah. Same price. Yeah. 4.5. I do remember there being a bit of a conversation here. So, yeah. I do remember you saying and, that you were going to get Stevens. And then I had a really big gut feeling that Palace's new Polish Maldini, mm-hmm. that we briefly spoke about, Yuck, I think his name is, something like that. Yeah. I thought, oh, he might start in place of Kelly. I don't think Kelly. he'd be calling him anything, to no. be honest, because it doesn't look as if he's going to get any game time. No, I thought he might come in for Kelly, but he decided to stay with Tompkins and Kelly, and he didn't even feature. So instead of getting Stevens' eight points, I believe he got, Ooh. I'll be getting Duff's two off the bench, mm. which was actually looking all right until obviously they conceded the goal yeah. from Stevens. Mm. So he kind of double burnt me there. Mm. Well, yeah, so one of those two. Well, at least you can thank me for persuading you to buy Firmino over Lacazette. That's true. At least for this game week. Yeah. You know, we'll wait and see what happens now. Yeah, when Lacazette doesn't play anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, all in all, well done on buying Firmino like I suggested. <laughs> he was actually supposed to be the one I moved the captaincy to. Hmm. But De Bruyne got more than him, so that's okay. But on that word of Mares, he is it's a tricky one he is sitting in the bin mm. there is quite a few in there because i am possibly maybe doing a wild card within the, the mm. next three weeks sort of the next three game weeks mm-hmm. um but if it had been amicable that he didn't go to yeah. man city if they just ran out of time or something mm. then it would be fine uh, i could just leave him in there but with him being so disappointed by the way mm. quote unquote leicester Treated it. Yeah, from from Mara's friend, yeah. as they're quoting it on the Sky Sports. Ricky Mara. Yeah, his friend. Quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, we all know that was Mara's on yeah. the phone. I'm so disappointed. <coughs> but don't say it was from me. <laughs> it was from my friend, I promise. <laughs> yeah, so I don't. I can understand that being so difficult for Mara's owners, and I know there's a lot of people out there who got him in, and it's just. Well, I yeah, just... he was the second. Most bought in player this week, I think. It's just, it's tough. What what do you do with with him? You know, mm. I a couple of people asked me, do I take the hit, do I get him out? And most of those people had already taken hits this game week because they were in difficult positions with Arnautovic and Rubens and, mm. yeah, various other injuries. And for me, I said, I, I doubt he'll play, but don't do it because... By this time next week, he, he could be a City player and he could be playing regular football for City mm. until injuries get better and obviously he'd lose that spot anyway. Well, I'm saying obviously, but, you know, that is the, the presumption. Most likely, yeah. So I kind of would be an advocate to hold this game week, which I was, but now, as you say, everything that happened at Leicester and the way it happened, and then these reports coming out that his teammates weren't happy, which is just mm. a bit odd. I mean, you know, I wonder who that could have been. <laughs> um, yeah, so... <laughs> it just makes it very difficult now, because will he go back to doing as well as he did before? Mm. Because that was all under the pretense that he kind of thought he was staying, his head hadn't been turned, and... You just got to hope he's going to be professional about it. Now, I would say he's got Swansea up next, so, you know, keep hold of him. Mm-hmm. But Swansea <laughs> yeah, well, have yeah, had a resurgence yeah. recently, and they are giant killers. And, pff, I don't know anymore, to be honest with you. But if I was you, I'd just buy Walcott. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> Don't do it. I'm in a minority right now and I like it. (laughs) It's a differential. (laughs) But you heard it here first, should it work out. (laughs) So is Mares your bin of sin? Yeah, yeah, he's on like a bin of sin watch list. 
he'll and probably he'll probably stay for this week just to see what they do, mm. whether he even gets played. I think it's I think it's probably a good thing to do, just maybe hold him one more week, especially if you've got other like fires to put out elsewhere. Just maybe balance through one more week and see, you know. What about your possible transfers? I got oh, well, Mares maybe, but no, no. Kenny mm. is one that because obviously Seamus played tonight. He did. Did. Welcome back, Seamus. Welcome back, Seamus. We're very happy to yeah. have you back. Long lost love. Yes, Come back to definitely. Us. You have saved me many of FPL seasons. <laughs> <laughs> and I, for one, am very grateful for you. <laughs> so get assisting them goals again, Seamus. <laughs> yeah. Walker and Coleman on the right-hand side. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> um, I should probably take Yuck back out. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> And Ogbonna, basically the defence, really, and maybe a backup goalkeeper because I could have really should have had a better option mm. than De Gea and I only got Spironi who isn't playing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so really sort of the defence needs an overhaul. Mm. I don't know what happened to Pogba, if it was an injury or if it was just yeah. a tactical. That's all a bit odd in that filet yeah. thing as well. Yeah. <laughs> what was that about? It's oh. like, ooh, on I come, yes, I'm going to win this game and then ooh, no, there we go. <laughs> not going to win this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's tactical or not. I'm not Mar- sure. If, he put him on, if Mourinho put him on, it was like, right, you go Mark Eriksson. And then Eriksson got the ball and had a shot and nearly scored. And they were like, right, no, 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 you come back. I'm going to put Herrera on Eriksson instead <laughs> and tell him to break him. Yeah. Yeah, but that was, that was really odd and kind of embarrassing if it wasn't an injury. Hmm. If it was an injury, then fair enough. That's just bad luck. Yeah. But then it's Fellaini. There's a lot of bad luck around that guy. And then with my changes, what about yours? In my bin of sin, it has to be Jones. I mean, it, it can't be anyone else. But I'm definitely not considering transferring him out just yet. Mm. So, as I explained earlier, I was thinking about the whole transfer for Sanchez, which involved dropping Aguero down to somebody incredibly cheap and then being able to upgrade Loftus' cheek to Sanchez, which would see me paying 4 5 one, or it would see me playing three five two. Mm. So um, with Kane and Wilson being my, you know, my spearhead. But as I said, I haven't seen enough of Sanchez yet to really want to kind of make such a massive commitment to doing that. At the moment, I've watched him twice now. I did watch both matches, and he seems very much the same as how he seemed to be at Arsenal, to be honest. Um, When he's attacking, he looks scary and he looks a threat. Yet when he's not attacking, he looks... He looks frustrated at times. Yeah, I guess frustrated is a good word. But for a lot of other players, it wouldn't worry me too much if it wasn't for the FPL price that Sanchez is under. So for me, I'm willing to put aside the frustrated parts of him if every other week he's going to get me really good goals. I mean, mm. look at Harry Kane, for instance. He's still in my team and he doesn't necessarily get the kind of frustrated that Sanchez does, but he doesn't exactly give me the haul every week either. Yeah. The only thing about Harry Kane is that it's very difficult to get him back once he's gone, whereas I'm in a slightly different situation with Sanchez where I'm now deciding whether it's worth you know, downgrading other players to get him in. And just yet, I haven't really seen his price equals form. And I need to see that really before spending that kind of money. And so my possible transfers, I'm in a difficult situation because Sanchez, having done well tonight, sees me make that move. And so therefore Rubens goes out of my team because he becomes Sanchez. Mm. Um, and, And it's clear that Rubens is most likely going to have to go because he's been red and he's been on my bench for a very long time now and I'm getting to the stage where I really need that fifth midfielder as an option Mm. just in case. So do I now try and find another 4.5 and use up a transfer just just to have somebody in Rubens' place in case I want to do the Sanchez move? Or do I now start freeing up funds so that I can make that player that fifth midfielder, somebody more expensive. And then I have Thibaut to worry about as well. Anyone else who has Coutoir will know that it's been a few game weeks now where we've really 
just haven't got anything. I mean, Alonso owners at least are getting goals. Some Aspilicueta owners are getting an assist every now and again. But those of us with Christensen or Coutoir, or lucky enough to have both, are really struggling for when Chelsea don't get the clean sheets Mm. that they were getting earlier on in the season. And so I have been starting to consider dropping my goalkeeper to somebody cheaper prime suspect for that was Schmeichel but them not getting the clean sheet tonight has kind of made me a little bit I would like to see that game back before making that kind of decision but I'm a bit like you I ha- I still have all my chips left so now's the time to really kind of think about when I want to use my wild card and how I want to use it so yeah I guess I could use this game week a bit more like a punt and just do something for the sake of it you know whether it's Tebow because to somebody who has a really good fixture or or a couple of good fixtures or somebody in for Rubens just as a kind of to have there and knowing that my wild card's probably going to get paid fairly soon anyway so I think I'd like to know what's going to happen with Jesus before making any real massive changes anywhere I also want to keep an eye on Aubameyang mm, yeah. and also Juru at Chelsea and to see where he's going to fit in there because all of those could be great options now that I'm in a situation where I'm kind of at a crossroads and there's quite a few ways I could go with my team. So I'm aware of the players I want out of my team, put it that way. Mm. I've just got to consider the ones I want in. <laughs> mm. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how he's going to do at Arsenal. Um, like, it's been a long time. I mean, I'm not going to say I wasn't excited not to get Lacazette, because I was, even though I didn't know too much about him. The difference being I know a fair bit more about Aubameyang, and there's been a lot of talk about him coming to Arsenal for a fair bit now. And mm. I don't know how it works. I really would have liked us to have signed a central mid or a central defender just yeah. to kind of... Well, especially after Swansea. Yeah, n- not have that kind of defensive thing to worry about. But at the same time, I, I'm i going to hold judgment, put it that way. Let's, let's wait and see what Arsene has up his sleeve before, you know, crying into my boots again, <laughs> like I did when we lost to Swansea. As we touched on Aubameyang and Giroud, mm-hmm. um, there were, of course, a few transfers today. Some interesting, some sort of not so interesting. Yeah. Um, Laporta, Man City, obviously played tonight, got a clean sheet, yeah. with Stones and, not being there. Yeah, another clean sheet without Stones. That seems to be an ongoing Twitter thing with me. I did notice quite early on, you know, the amount of times that Stones hadn't played and the amount of clean sheets that City had when he wasn't there. So it's kind of become a bit of a <laughs> a thing. It's it's nothing against John Stone. Oh no, I'm not pointing out it's, that he's a bad it's player just, or anything. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm just saying I they do. don't seem to get clean sheets while he's <laughs> there. <laughs> and you know, but I think I heard somewhere the new fella, Laporte, Laporte is five point five. So he's mm. a pretty good kind of sort way ben, into ben that Davis city defense sort of if level. you haven't got Otmendi like I have so maybe I could think about doing a swap but I think we need to see whether John Stones actually is ill yeah likes reported or whether or not it we has been a tactical yeah tactical switch Lucas more to Spurs Palmieri to Chelsea mm. is an interesting one because he's basically Alonso position yeah I think so I'm not sure this there's been some backup. reports that he is just there for backup, that he's not quite first team ready yet. So I don't think Alonso owners have to be too concerned yet. <laughs> they can all sleep easy. Yeah. Um, Creo to Southampton, Mangala to Everton, Somalia, Newcastle. But there's one that definitely stood out. Mm-hmm. Swansea's record signing. <laughs> yes. Are you for are you? <laughs> Two Ayu. Two Ayu. <laughs> Brothers are back together. 18 mils of an hour. Yeah, bro love, bro love. We have just, just smashed that Ayu pick. Uh, anyone else claiming that can just go away because I'm sorry. Back in 
I don't know when. It was episode 12. Episode 12, right. I'll have to repost that on Twitter. That was... We put that out there about IU. And to be fair, he hadn't done a whole lot before then. He was a bit sporadic. He definitely would have been more like a lightning pick back in the day, you know, because he would strike and then do nothing for quite some time. But since we mentioned him on that pod... Mm. He's been, whoa, he's been a fire pick. Oh, yeah. He's been, been a fire pick. Game week 16 we were talking about. Yeah. And he before then, he'd only scored one goal mm-hmm. against Palace, typically, mm, back in game week three. Ooh. And then he had back-to-back assists in eight and nine. So before 16, he hadn't done anything for a good five or six weeks. And then since then, he's gone on to score four goals. Wowzers. At a pretty consistent rate of a goal every other game, literally. In the last seven game weeks. Yeah. One of which typically against Palace. We can definitely claim <laughs> him as one of our own. Yeah. Definitely. So we have, it's official, we made Jordan Ayew. Yes. And now we can make Andre Ayew too. Yes. So you might want to get both Ayews. Ayews are from. <laughs> Two Ayews. I'm not sure I'm advocating that. <laughs> Double Swansea up top, do it. <laughs> do it. Ayew to Ayew, Ayew. <laughs> Just like, are you go, are you assist? Just, you know, just wherever you throw the first initial. It's just something really good about that on my OCD, to be honest. <laughs> just, are you's everywhere. Um, but there won't be an are you in next week's heavyweight game. So obviously, they don't play for Liverpool and they don't play for Spurs. No. At Anfield, Liverpool coming back after their string of a couple of defeats. Yeah. Bounce it back. Spurs, obviously, with all the momentum from Wembley today. I'm going to go for a tool because the Liverpool defence is still shaky, but their attack is so overwhelming that they can overwhelm the Spurs defence. Yeah. The problem we got here is that Harry Kane is in chase for that 100th goal. And we Mm. know that when a player is in chase for a 100th goal, that it never seems to happen. (laughs) It just never seems to happen. It just take a good few weeks. I'd like to say whilst Harry Kane isn't scoring, Spurs can't score. (laughs) But after the 2-0 tonight, it's not really, uh, you know, yeah. Although Um, only one of those was scored by a Spurs player. That's true. That's very true. And S. Jones was a sheep in wolf's clothing. Possibly. (laughs) Uh, Although there is theories of that sort of thing going around, of players being inserted into other teams to bring them down from the inside. There was a mention of the many players that Arsenal may have sold to other teams. One of each to every other team besides Man City. Yeah. They can't be caught, but you know. Although Theo's not really helping that. No. Especially bringing them down. Like, kind of, not kind scoring. Of did away with my theory there. <laughs> Theo, uh, Anyway, what am I going to go for on this heavyweight? I will go for a 3 2 to Liverpool. Not feeling hugely confident on that one, but that's what I'm going with. Well, 3 2 is a score I'm going for the Sporting Act game. Okay. Uh, which is. Arsenal versus Everton. Oof. Theo returning to the Emirates a couple of weeks after leaving. Yeah. He's obviously forgotten something in his locker. Mm-hmm. Um, or Bamiyang's locker now, number 14. Yeah, that's true. Um, obviously, probably be a Bamiyang's debut game. I Mkhitaryan. Hope so. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Mkhitaryan may start, get his first start for the team. I hope so. <laughs> Ozil, after signing the I new contract. <laughs> Giroud play. Uh, no, no, mm. no, I was hoping to lure you in there. Will it be the... So, I actually saw on Twitter, mm-hmm. someone was like, now that they bought a Bamiyang, yeah. Arsenal have Lacazette, mm-hmm. Mkhitaryan, mm-hmm. a Bamiyang, mm-hmm. and Ozil. Mm-hmm. So they got L-M-A-O. <laughs> yeah, that's there. what most teams will be doing now. That's when we've got <laughs> our top four and they're smashing gold whilst us being fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have given people ideas. <laughs> um, but I think they'll be LMAOing all over Everton. Okay. Well, not all over. Well, I said 3 2, as I said for my intro. So, 3 2 Arsenal. Yeah, I'm going to go Desmond for this one. I would love to just stick my neck out and say, go team! I, I'm hoping they'll be Aubameyang goals. But I just. I'm not convinced yet. I don't know. I'm erring on the pessimistic side. It's just 
every time I get any kind of hope from Arsenal and after the performance last weekend going into the Swansea game I was so positive and I haven't had that for such a long time feeling quite like yes we've got this Mm. and then Mickey's gonna play and it's gonna be brilliant and finally I feel like an Arsenal (laughs) supporter again and then I just yeah I just got so disappointed and I'm just a bit too nervous to get my hopes up again, to be honest. I need to be kind of wooed back in slowly. (laughs) So Gently serenaded. If I go and say they're going to win, they definitely don't stand a chance. So, And I think that's half the problem because I brought Mustafi into that draft co-team that I've got. And I think I pretty much just, you know, put the scuppers on him. (laughs) So, yeah, I can't can't, can't, can't say they're going to win. I'm I'm sorry. It's not because I don't think they will. I don't know whether they will or not. I'm just going for a draw. I'm just going to show up now. Okay, fair enough. (laughs) Okay. Um, um, I think think we'll share the surprise one this week. Shall we share it? Yeah, we can do. a quick turnaround. Oh, that's that's, that's the first on the popping pod. (laughs) Um, Well, I put this down as a surprise fixture before this game week started. Okay. Because I thought it might have been a bit of a surprise, but now my prediction may not actually be a surprise. Because I, the surprise one is Leicester Swansea. Yeah. And I went for a surprise Swansea 2 1 win. Now, obviously, it'd probably be more of a surprise if Leicester won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Swansea are the hashtag giant killing swans. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's about Liverpool and Arsenal. Yeah. So. They can they can beat former champions. Yeah, they can. May not be a surprise, but do you think they'll beat them, or do you think their exceptional run will only last two games? Yeah, I think they can do it. And um, what do you go for again? I went for two one. Oh, see, that's what I would have gone for. Um, uh, well, we both went for one all last time. We were both right. Yeah, that's true. If that's going to be the score, that's going to be the score. Yeah. Yeah. If that's the score on the door. Yeah, okay, let's go for that then. Seeing as we're sharing the surprise pick, yeah. let's actually go with this, the share. Yeah, yeah joint, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, copycat. <laughs> Probably be putting our teams out on Twitter when we've actually yeah. know our ranks and stuff like that. Yeah, um, which you can find on the FPL Journal blog Twitter yeah. page. Probably be tweeting. Um, mine is at McTavis and Nims is... At Nimfria TV. Awesome. And as always... Uh, the podcast will be up on Nim's YouTube channel, yep. youtube.com forward slash FPL Nim Freer. It'll be on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher. Just search for the FPL Popping Pod. Yep. And of course, all of you should never forget to keep popping. Hashtag keep popping.